So it's been a few days now since um, Rove had the news that Travis was going to Ipswich um, and it's been confirmed a few days ago as well. In my opinion, I think this is an awful decision. I think the only beneficial side I can see from it is it frees up a bit of the wage bill because he's one of our higher earners and that's the only benefit side I can see of it because we can maybe bring in a few players with... Uh, on lower wages either on loan or on permanent signings but um, I don't really understand it we're lacking experience and then we go loan out our experienced player one of the most experienced players in the club our club captain uh, there's rumours that he fell out with JDT uh, is that true or not I don't know I would say it's more than likely because JDT can be a bit stubborn he's known for being a stubborn manager and you don't want your club captain out for no reason, so there's got to be something going on in the background which not not a lot of fans will know of. Um, is it a good move for him personally? Um, I would think so. Ipswich second can probably go on and get promotion with him, even if it's in the playoffs or automatic. Um, so he should go there and do right well and be a shit house with that Sam Morsey. I think that's a good midfield for Ipswich and it probably would get them to go up. But I can't wrap my head around why we would let our captain leave on loan when we'll, the squad is thin as it is, the injuries we have. And then we're loaning out our midfielder, our club captain, our skipper. I think it's, I think it's a disgrace in all honesty. I think it's a really poor decision. One which I'm not happy with, um, personally because he's one of my favourite players for Rovers, I just really do enjoy Trav, even though he might not be the best on the ability, but we do need our captain and we do need the experience in the team. I know Wharton and Tronsted um, have been playing above him, but Tronsted's been inc incredible, Wharton's been fairly average to me, he's not impressed me amazingly this season, so I could, I could have seen Travis even getting back in the team, but... With him going out on loan to Ipswich now, it's never going to happen. Um, I really can't wrap my head around it, especially with Rovers being in really bad form at the minute. Um, we won against Cambridge over there, but it's the lead one side. And even then, we struggled for the first half. I thought we didn't deserve to be in game, um, really. But I think it's an awful decision. Uh, I really can't wrap my head around it. Uh, I think personally I think JDT is going to walk at end of the season and Travis is going to come back that's why I think it's a low move because it would have been more sense to sell Travis on to Ipswich instead of loaning him out so personally I can probably see that happening but yeah it's a, it's a difficult one for me I can't wrap my head around it and then the other news is Rovers have signed two new players a full back from Aston Villa called Ben um, and a young lad from Brighton called Yassif. Uh, I'm not saying the last names because I'll butcher them. Um, but that Yassif come from Coventry, spent the season out on loan, played 13 times, one goal. Um, most of his appearances coming off the bench. Am I going to be too impressed with that signing? Um, as it stands, not really. Because um, Travis is gone and we're bringing in a young lad in the exact same position. Doesn't make sense to me. Um Coventry fans didn't rate him. He came on against Cambridge yesterday. Um, didn't do really do anything, but he only had 10 minutes, so you can't really impress a lot of people in 10 minutes of a football game. Um, but yeah, could he be all right for us? I don't know. It's another Brighton loan. Most of the Brighton loans have impressed so far. Uh, still got Moran here, so it might be good link-up play between the two, but... Is he what we need? Arguably, for my case, he's not what we need for the club. Um, but a new, a new face in the door is always welcome. Uh, so we just got to see how he gets in. Uh, this other lad coming from Villa, uh, he's not really had much first team football in his career, what I've seen. Um, but he's, I think he's twenty under twenty ones for Villa, and he's a fullback. And in my opinion, it should be a good signing because we need some competition for Pickering. Because I don't rate Pickering. He got he goes forward with the ball. Always seems to come back with it and pass it back to the centre backs. Never takes anyone on. Very frustrating player to watch, and it's about time we have some competition for him because, in my opinion, I don't think Pickering's good enough. So it'll be interesting to see if this lad kicks him out of the team and has more potential than Pickering in the six month warm deal we have on him. 
Um, but it's nice to see we're going for full-backs because I said, uh, in my opinion, full-backs are one of the most positions we need because our full-backs keep getting beaten too easy by wingers and it's how they're getting the goals. Most teams come in, either hoof a ball up front and it beats our centre-backs so they take our full-backs on, cross the ball in and score. Um, so it's interesting to see what the full-back positions are going to be like. I do not know too much about him so I can't go into full detail how I expect him to be like. But competition for Pickering is always welcome, in my opinion. be interesting to see how he plays under JDT. Villa fans seem to rate him, so it could potentially be a good signing for us. Um, I've heard he can play on the left or right, but he prefers playing on the left. So it's a good option, in my opinion, to get a, a new defensive player in. I think we do need a centre-back as well and another attacker, and I think that's all we really need, really. Uh, maybe a winger or something, but I'm not too sure. But decent little business to get two signings in in the transfer window already. I'm happy with that, um, but the negative is Travis is gone, which I still can't get my head around. But yeah, two new lads in. Let's see how they do. Welcome them to the Blackburn Rovers Football Club. So, um, my reaction to Lewis Travis leaving and the new signings we've made, um, repping a new Udi, I think they're called, uh, the dressing gown has, has gone. So, there might be a few fans <laughs> who are gutted about my uh, dressing gown going. I know Philly Pete will be in particular. Um, but yeah, less of less of my uh, dressing gowns. Um, Lewis Travis... Um, yeah, I was I was a bit gutted to see the post he did and whatnot, um, announcing he'd moved to Ipswich on his Instagram. And you know, he he, he is a player who bleeds blue and white. He every time he he goes onto the pitch, he gives a hundred percent. I don't think anyone can question that from Travis. He's he's our captain for a reason. Um, so it was hard to see that. I'll be honest, but. Do I think it's the right decision for Travis and for Rovers? I do, personally. Um, you know, there, there are times this season where I think it definitely could be argued we should have gone to a, a free in midfield, um, you know, have have Smodix as your, as your number 10 with two in front of him or have Smodix in that front three. Um and, and put Travis into that midfield free because we have been so open at times. But I think um I think John Dow's just made his mind up on Travis. He he went through that appalling run last season where he was benched, um, despite being our captain. And um, you know, he, he came back stronger from it. But this season I think Tronstad has really showed him up. Um obviously John Dow doesn't trust him in that holding pivot role. You only have to look back to Preston at home last season um, where we were trying to play it out from the back. Travis gets the ball at his feet and he just cannot handle the pressure. He cannot handle someone closing him down. He just shits himself, uh, to, to put it bluntly. Um, and he gave away such a cheap goal. And there were so many moments like that where... John Dahl wants that holding pivot role player to be able to handle the ball, be able to play it out from the back. And it's just not in his ballpark that. Um, so you're taking Travis out of that pivot role where it is his position. Obviously, he is more of a combatant than someone who is, you know, a ball player and can handle the pressure under the ball and whatnot. So whenever he was playing for us, it would be as a box-to-box -box midfielder, which he doesn't have enough about with his game to play that role realistically. You know, he's, I mean, in, in his time for Rovers, he's probably scored, what, two, three goals. Um, and he's been playing for us for a long, old time now. Um, you know, he, there are a couple of times, don't get me wrong, where he, he has produced some unreal passes. But more often than not, that just isn't the case. It's a lot of sideways and backwards with Travis. Um, and not brave enough on the ball or really technically gifted enough, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you, you do think back to QPR away last season where I think De Bruyne would have been proud of the pass he made uh, for, was it Joe Rankin Costello? Um, and, you know, also 
the pass he made for Arne Sigurdsson away at Ipswich this season, another unbelievable ball. But we just, just don't see that enough from Travis to warrant him being in the team, in my opinion. And when we were seeing him in that box-to-box role, he'd more often than not find himself out on the wing, which, you know, he's just like a fish out of water out on a wing. Um, so I can understand why John Dahl has, has let him go, uh, freed up some wages for us, which have obviously allowed us, it seems, to bring in these two players, um, a centre-half and a left-back, two positions we needed covering realistically. Um, you know, Pickering, there's, there's no other there's no other left-back at the club after letting Ed on and Mola go. Um, and obviously with centre-halves, you know, we we found ourselves in a position, haven't we, where you know Hyam was injured, Wharton was out, um, you know, and Carter Carter was out as well, and we just found ourselves in a really bad position. So I can understand why we've we've probably made the decision with Travis being surplus to requirements. Really, um, I don't think anyone can argue that Sondra hasn't been brilliant this season. He's put in a seven or eight out of ten in pretty much all his games that since he started having this run of games, you know, he's he's put in a, at least a seven, eight out of ten, um every game. And obviously Adam Wharton is just so technically gifted you have to have him in this team. And Travis just is not getting in in front of either of them. Um I do think, like I said before, potentially we should have moved to a midfield three with how bad we've been on this run. But I think JDT is seeing this season as somewhat of a write-off. Play, carry on with the system, persist with it, and um, just just get better at it essentially, and just have it like clockwork for next season. If we carry on with it and per- persist with it, I would imagine his thinking is we're going to go into next season better for it. Hopefully, obviously, with a good summer transfer window, which means we can go into that season full of confidence. And, um, you know, obviously it was a three-year plan with JDT. This is his last season. The the season coming up is obviously his last season, which is the season he needs to achieve playoffs ultimately. And I think that's the way JDT will be seeing it. I don't think the goal, well, the, the cl- clearly the goal this season was to stay up, according to, you know, Wagger. Um, he's, you know, he's obviously been quoted saying that in an interview. So I don't think JDT is feeling any real pressure. Um, there's no real chance of us going down, really. Um, I mean, touch wood. Um, you know, obviously we are going to be getting Dolan, Hedges, Gallagher, Joe Rankin, Costello back. All players who will gain us points from now till the end of the season. Um, you know, so we should be fine. It's just going to be a very boring mid-table season unfortunately you would feel um unless something drastic happens from now till the end of the season but it, it is the championship you know just look at the run Aston Villa went on and snuck into the playoffs and went up you know who would have thought that but the odds on that happened in a second to none I would think you know Jack Grealish coming back we've got Sam Gallagher um but yeah I think it's the right move for both parties personally um, I think as a club, we've outgrown Travis. I think under Mowbray, you know, we we obviously weren't trying to play this style of football other than the COVID season, which just showed our limitations as a, as a team. Um, but you know, obviously in that midfield too as well, we had the two holders. It allowed Travis to do Travis things, and it took the pressure off him. He had he had the easy ball to his left. Every single time he get it, um, whereas obviously in that pivot role by himself, he just cannot play it. And if this is the way we're going to be playing under John Dahl, you know, obviously he needs to be moved on. I think um, I did see a post on Instagram regarding John Dahl being too stubborn. You know, he's he's letting our captain go, someone who does bleed blue and white. And you know, a lot of people were saying they'd rather see JDT leave and Travis and whatnot. Obviously, it does seem he's kind of getting rid of this kind of old guard, it would seem, from the Marbury era. I mean, you know, Diaz, Dak, um, Buckley, you know, showing the door. 
uh, Travis now, kind of these players that are all kind of clicky as well, you know, and we have, there's the picture of Diaz, Dak and Buckley fishing and whatnot. Just, yeah, obviously he's trying to imprint himself on this squad, John Dahl, and um, I suppose he has to do that really. If, if he wants to make a success of next season, we cannot be allowing, I suppose, for, you know, Travis to take up wages when he, he's just going to be on the bench and not really be much of an impact for us. Um, I think it's quite clear there's been a falling out there. You know, so much so Travis actually liked that Instagram post and as did Thomas Kaminsky, another player who was kind of somewhat shown the door, obviously with pairs getting in ahead of him. Um, obviously Kaminsky not having that kind of passing ability out from the back, which John Doe wants so badly. Uh, another player shown the door. Um, Travis liked that Instagram post about, you know, um, JDT should be going before him and yeah and whatnot, um, which is telling and isn't a great look uh, to be honest with you when your captain's kind of going against going against the head coach um, I think in terms of the two players we've got I think it's positions we needed as I said but not the players we needed um, I think obviously it's you know Everyone in the comments on both signings will be will tell you that you know we're, we're crying out for experienced heads. We're crying out for a Daniel Ayala, for example. Uh, just a Daniel Ayala that isn't a sick note, I suppose. But we just simply can't afford experienced players. I think comes to the to the bones of it. Really, um, we can only afford loans, and if we're getting loan players. Nine times out of ten, it is going to be kids, unfortunately. Um, you know, we're, we're crying out for experienced heads in that defence. And, you know, I think I think it's no coincidence that the defence has been so poor this season with Dom Hyam being out for quite a considerable amount of time. Or by far our most, you know, experienced player, to be honest. Never mind, even defender. Um, so... You know, obviously, I think he's been rushed back somewhat. What's not great, um, but yeah, I just, I just simply don't think we can afford to to get any experience centre halves or left backs in who are gonna want you know under fifteen k a week if we can even afford that at this point. Um, you know, so we 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 kind of we are where we are. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a mid table season. Um, and we're just going to have to hope that in the summer there's money available, whatever there is. You know, we we spent a million the summer just going, what's pathetic? Um, you know, obviously we're going to end up selling Travis. Um, if we sell Adam Wharton, how much money does that free up? Um, and just take it from there, I suppose. Hope, obviously, we can keep hold of Smodix, who... I think we will, personally. Um, we've obviously got Arna Sigurdsson tied down for 18 months now, who is going from strength to strength and should be a quality player next season, hopefully. And, um, yeah, I think we just need to obviously sort out the goalkeeping department. I don't think Leo is, is ready. Um, whether he is come summer... And obviously, after summer, he, he could come back a different player, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I don't think Pears or Leo is the answer right now, anyway. Um, and obviously, you know, a goalkeeper has to inspire confidence in his back four. Can't be flapping at corners and whatnot and single handedly costing us points multiple games in a row with such rookie errors. Um, so yeah. That's my thoughts anyway. Um, let me know what your kind of thoughts are, I suppose, guys, in the comments below. It'd be interesting um, to see. I mean, uh, I've seen quite mixed reactions, really. Some people who were outraged by it and other people who couldn't understand it and, you know, um, are kind of happy with the, the situation, really. Um, so, yeah, be interested to see that. I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Lewis Travis gone to Ipswich, guys. He's gone. He's done. Dusted off on his way. It was Buckley. 
in September or August. And now we have Lewis Travis going to Ipswich. Grass isn't greener, always greener on the other side. We saw that with Buckley. His wages weren't getting paid there on time there for a little bit there with the Wednesday crew down there. But hopefully it pans out for Lewis Travis. I hope he does well. I hope that Ipswich, uh, you know, falters. But overall, I hope the best for Lewis Travis because I do like him. I thought he was the most trip chipper on our crew and he was able to uh, be that voice and vouch for us as the captain should be when he's out there on the pitch. And that's, that's the main point there is when he's out there on the pitch because he wasn't been, been getting out there. Maybe they knew of this move sooner than us and that it was only a matter of time with the transfer window opening for it to happen. Uh, but yeah, we didn't see him getting much minutes lately in December and you know, December didn't go very well. So, you know, you're not getting the blame there, uh, so much so, Lewis. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird one. We lose our captain, uh, to a championship team that is looking to get promoted a second year in a row. And it looks, uh, it's it's a bad look, a bad look for sure. But I, you know, if you're not getting, if you're not playing, and you want to be, you know, putting your, getting your, your value up, and you, you know, you saw what Buckley did. He was able to play his case maybe and get himself out of there and get himself there more minutes than a Wednesday. Uh, maybe he saw the the roadmap there for himself. Uh, they're clearly not on the same page and JDT. Uh, the only thing, you know, I can say is I do believe in Greg. I think, you know, I think Greg is going to take this and go with it. And I think this transfer window, we saw, you know, they're kind of, uh, we saw two loanies signing on Friday there, the Aston Villa guy, the Brighton loanie, uh, left back and so forth. And, you know, they're trying to cover up that we're losing our captain. It's a mere tweet there. Oh, by the way, Lewis Travis is off to Ipswich. You know, he's going to be performing with Ed Sheeran there on Sunday night uh, in all his glory. So I, I don't know. I don't like that. It's just, you know, oh, but, you know, and we're kind of sandwiching him between lo two low knee signings, uh, you know, young, inexperienced and not highly touted as much so we heard from the Coventry team or fan base. So concerning for sure. Concerning. I, uh, not sure what to make of it. I'm just, I don't really, you know, I'm not, I thought there was a little, a lot of outrage on Twitter, but I didn't have so much. So because I think we're in the midst of the transfer window and we're going to get the business done and Greg has to make up for last January. Over the summer, we didn't get as many people as we needed. We've seen that in the fall. There's been injuries. There's been gaps. And we've got young crew on the bench there. Nobody to step in, you know, when we go down and when we're up against it. And we're giving up goals left and right. And we're losing games left and right and so forth. And, you know, as soon as the subs come in on the opposition side of things, we're down and out. And it's uh, it's starting to catch up with us for sure. So I just don't think, you know, if we want to have any hope or prayer, I know there's been this talk about staying up. But I do think that Greg is going to get some better big business done in this month. And I think, uh, you know, there's rumors now of Sam Gallagher. There's that ongoing rumor with the Orlando Duncan McGuire. There's, uh, the, the crew lads, the Leeds crew, the Leeds guys. Uh, so there's a lot of rumors happening and we're already on it there with the two on Friday. We need more players. We need to keep going. And JDT ha knows what he wants and he's been, it sounds like he's being vocal to Greg. And why get and saying, you know, listen, this one isn't working out. Let's keep going. And, you know, I, if, if, if it's not working on both sides of things, I guess, you know, maybe it's not JDT. Maybe it's more so Lois 
and it was a little bit of contagion there from the John Buckley side of things. And everybody's signing all these contracts, you know, renewing their relationships with Rovers there. You saw Sammy, Sammy Smudge, you saw the Iceman, Pickering and so forth and uh, tying up assets, still waiting on the Dom Hyam and so forth. But yeah, I, I don't know. I am not as outraged, you know, I really do like Lewis Travis, don't get me wrong. I do like him and I uh, I value him, uh, but you know, I believe that there is a plan, probably naively so. I believe that we're gonna see this one out and that there is a plan to, uh, you know, back up Tronstad and uh, keep going in the window and keep going and keep building on that team-wise, player-wise, and finding a way to pad our locker room there for the upcoming second half, because I hope uh, it will be a better scene than December was. We're a draw in now, we're a FA Cup win in now, and Hopefully now we can build on that in the West Brom game, which is going to be a tough one next Saturday. We'll see there. But Lewis Travis loaned out Ipswich Town. The Tractor Boys, our captain, no more. Dom Heim now captained Light and Shining Armor and its vice captain, Sammy Smonage who usually, well, I guess Dom Heim was on the bench there when Sammy Smudge was always captaining. I don't know if they were ever on the bench, on the pitch together. And yeah, I guess it has always been Dom Heim and Sammy Smudge if Dom's not on there. But yeah, vice captain Sammy Smudge, league leading goal scorer Sammy Smudge. And you know, I don't want him worrying about anything else. I want him to just continue scoring goals. So, you know, keep it at Dom Heim. You know, he should be focused. I, I It's... That's fine as is. Captain, vice captain. You know, I do, I will say this though. No one grabbed that armband faster when they came on the pitch off the bench from Sammy Smonich faster on any team than Lois Travis. He ran immensely so over to Sammy, grabbed the armband, put it on himself, let it be known. I'm the captain. I'm here. I'm going to lead us into battle. And uh, yeah. I like that. I did like it. Uh, you know, he he made his he made it known that you know he's given this. If you, if you want to take it away from me, take it away from me. Do that. Loan me out. I guess he said, loan me out if you want to take this away from me because that's essentially what happened. But yeah, Lewis, Captain No More, onward and upward to West Brom next Saturday. Be with Philly Rovers. See you guys.